cops, FBI agents, and other law enforcement agents. What are some of the most gruesome crimes that you have witnessed? NSW. My girlfriend's sister works as a police officer in Chorley in the UK. She came home one day and was shaking because she had been called out to a disturbance call. When she walked in there was a man sitting in the corner staring at the door she came through. Practically looking through her, the guy was destroyed on M and had carved the skin off his wrists and was playing with the tendons in his arm to move his fingers. Not sure how much of that is medically accurate but with the look on her face I believed her. Med student here. Yes, some of tendons are very superficial. You can get to them without cutting too many of the major arteries. Nerves not so much. Yes, you can pull on the tendons to flex the fingers. I know this because that is how you check which muscle in the forearm flexes what finger. S. In the hand. All from anatomy dissection. Warning. Not gruesome. Just sad. Not a cop but my father was a Houston police officer for 12 years. However, the worst thing he had to deal with was when he was dispatched to a fight at a pool hall in Pasadena, South Houston. He said that when he arrived on the scene, it was only him and another officer. Supposedly, there was a fight inside the pool hall between two men. One had pulled out a knife and stabbed the other in the heart or some other vital organ. The guy that was stabbed couldn't have been older than 20 years at the time, my father's recollection, and had made his way towards the front of the pool hall where he had collapsed at the doorway, bleeding, and to top it all off, it was a rainy day. So, here's this young man, laying halfway in the hall and halfway out, bleeding, getting rained on. I know, this should be the least of his worries, and gasping for air. My dad said that sight would never leave his mind but what made it even worse was when the kid's mother made it to the scene. She made it just in time to hold her son's hand, tell him she loved him and watched him die, on a crappy day, in a crappy pool hall on a crappy side of town. No offense to people who live in Pasadena or South Houston. Collapsed lung. That is a really crappy way to die. It is drowning on your own blood. The most messed up one was not a particularly gruesome scene but this guy had two one terabyte hard drives filled with chili pee think about it, two terabytes of pictures and videos of chili pee, abuse, sodomy and debauchery. Former Detroit cop, there are two stories I will relate the first is a straight out of nightmares situation involving a young pregnant girl the daughter of a local pastor, the young lady had been pregnant and apparently gave birth to a very premature baby maybe 4 months max, in the bathroom of her house during the middle of the night. Apparently she had some kind of complications and was bleeding pretty badly. My guess is she was so scared she hid the evidence in her room and tried to clean up the mess while everyone was asleep. The poor girl passed out at some point in her room kneeling against the dresser where she had placed the premature baby in some cloth. She basically bled out during the night and passed with her baby. From what I saw it looked like she had been praying over it with her pink book covered bible. It was an incredibly shaking sight to say the least. In the morning her mother saw the blood and called 9. 1. 1. Obviously she was in some kind of shock when the SGT and I got there with the medical team. It was a pretty gruesome scene and she was being treated as the SGT was questioning her on the living room couch. The only thing I heard the lady say before the medics took her into the coach was don't tell my husband. He'll never understand. I think about that girl every time I see my daughter. The second experience was at a local train yard where there was an accident coach call. We get called to make a police report from the medical team that arrived. When we pull up there's a pretty good sized crowd around a box car that had fell over while they were replacing the train wheels. The medical team is huddled on one corner where we proceed to approach. The SGT I was with that day was on his phone when we pulled up so he was a few steps behind me when I got there. The train car had fell upon this guy from about the better button down and absolutely squished all the blood and organs into his upper body. He did not die immediately. There were claw marks in the gravel mix around his arm where he was obviously trying to pull himself out from under this thing. There were several sets. His eyes were bulged out like that scene from Total Recall where Arnold is in the open Martian air. His tongue was swollen so big his mouth was stuck open, but amazingly very little blood. Finally the sergeant walks up behind me and looks around my shoulder and just says yep, he's dead then walks back to the car on his phone. It was about that time that I decided that police work might not be what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I didn't want to become the person the sergeant was. I left a few months later and moved to Texas. 
got a call that someone had thrown a baby out of a car in one of our more seedy areas. Surprisingly, these types of calls aren't uncommon. When I get to the call I see a small bundle of clothes laying on the double middle line in the street. As I get out of my car I see it is actually a toddler face down laying on the wet pavement. I carefully roll the child over and I can tell it is bad. He isn't old enough to talk and probably couldn't anyway. He is moaning in pain from his injuries. I get on the radio and ask if the paramedics are on the way and they tell me they hadn't sent them because it seemed like a bogus call. I got to hold this baby while he was dying from internal injuries until the paramedics arrived. I didn't pick him up because I was afraid of causing more problems. As the ambulance was arriving, we noticed a female walking toward us. It became obvious a female was under the influence of some type of narcotic. She kept talking about her baby, and we were able to decipher that she had thrown the baby at a passing vehicle because she was trying to get a ride. The ambulance transported the child to the hospital, but we knew he basically died with me there on the road. My shift ended prior to the call being complete. I asked for permission to complete the call because I wanted to see this murderer in jail. After I booked the lady, and the victim into jail. I lost it. Couldn't drive home for several minutes. I have been an officer for 13 years and that is the one call that has haunted me since I took it. Probably not the most gruesome crime scene. I have seen brains on several calls. It was however, the most bothersome and therefore gruesome call I have ever had. Suspect convicted and currently serving a 25 year sentence. Dang man. I felt this crap with my heart. Definitely beats everything else in this thread. I asked my cop friend this once, and this was his response. I walked in on a domestic violence case. Usually it's just arguments that led to shoving maybe a minor injury, nothing too serious. Usually, this one, the door was wide open, and when we approached, there was a woman lying on the ground covered in blood. She was dead. Next to her, was a man, dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The worst part was, her 3 year old son was standing about 10 featuring away, shocked, looked like he had seen a ghost, and he wasn't crying out loud, he just had tears streaming down his cheeks, I took him and kept him outside to get him away from everything and stayed with him all night until his aunt picked him up, apparently the man that shot the woman was her boyfriend, and they got into some argument, he was practically in tears when he told me. He said that he had to take a couple weeks off afterwards to clear his head. The young boy being there seeing everything really got to him. Comma. That young boy is the next Dexter, or ice cream truck killer. I'm leaving it, to further prove my incompetence at referencing things on Reddit. My dad was a volunteer firefighter and a 19 year old kid in my town tried to commit suicide by shooting himself in the head. My dad and his team were one of the first groups of people to go into the basement where he was, and the kid was still alive, just with half of his face blown up. Some guys started throwing up immediately, and the part that haunts him is before they even found the kid they could see the splatter of blood all over the walls. My mother works in burn and plastics at the hospital, and according to her stories it seems to be not all that rare of an occurrence unfortunately. People oftentimes flinch right before pulling the trigger, which makes the bullet end up hitting somewhere non-lethal, or even just the kickback from the gun can often cause the same results. Our dinner conversations are fun haha. <laughs> Obligatory, the older guy I go hunting with is an ex-cop. He told me this story about how he shows up to a call from the wife saying that the husband had a heart attack. He was the first to show up. So he walked into the apartment and the wife was in her robe and the husband was dead and naked, on the floor. So he began questioning her to see what happened. She stuck to her guns and said it was a heart attack. Well after all was said and done turns out they had some sort of weird fetish of eating raw meat out of Wiffy's snatch. The dude was going to town on her and was trying to eat some raw steak out of her and coked on the meat and died. I used to work in the electronics department of my city's Zellers, Canadian Walmart. The secret shopper who worked at the store was trying to become a police officer. His father and two brothers are currently police officers so when the store was slow sometimes he'd come and watch Golden Girls with me on the display TVs and share stories. He told me that during the first week that his brother was with the force, him and his senior partner were called to home because of a domestic dispute. They show up to the home that's in a very rough area of town to find a husband and wife in a very heated fight. The wife appeared to be on drugs and was completely flipping out. 
The husband was yelling at her saying things like, how could you do it? I can't believe you would do it etc. The senior police officer stepped in to calm the couple down and told the younger officer to search the house. The guy walks into the kitchen to find a big pot boiling on the stove with the lid on it. He turns down the heat and looks into the pot to find the couple's 6 month old baby boiling on the stove. I guess the husband had been at work and the wife took some sort of drug and killed their child. Apparently the guy is still a police officer but was completely traumatized by what he witnessed. It was his first freaking week. What the actual freak. My dad has been working in the correction system for years and there's only one story he's told me that has stuck. A fight broke out in the cafeteria, with a big guy who already had a life sentence just beating another guy senseless. When a fight breaks out in the prison, they have to lock the whole prison down before they go in to break it up, in case it's just a diversion for something else. In the time it took them to secure the place and get in there, the big guy pulverized the other man's face, then put him under a coffee urn and opened the spout. My dad tells me the guy's face pretty much melted off. After that, he pulled the body onto the floor, face down, picked up the guy's legs, leaned forward, and folded the guy in half. The man clearly did not make it through this alive. When the riot team rushed in the big guy was waiting on the floor, hands behind him to be cuffed. No fight. This is why I'm against people going to prison for minor, victimless crimes such as drug possession. My firefighter friend likes to get drunk and tell stories. His favorite is when they were called to move an elderly man who'd been bedridden for some time. They got to the not so clean house and situated themselves to move him from his bed. When they went to lift him, half the bed sheets were stuck to him. The other half were alive with roaches that were shooting out of his backside. Since I can never get the image out of my mind, I'm glad to share it with you and we can now all suffer together. Comma since I can never get the image out of my mind, I'm glad to share it with you and we can now all suffer together. Frick you. I was security during the trial of some guy who murdered his girlfriend and then chopped off his dong. His story had been that he was trying to release them from demons. It became pretty obvious that he was just a terrible person who chopped off his own dong so he could plead insanity. It was a very graphic murder and the offender was a seriously scary guy. Comma it became pretty obvious that he was just a terrible person who chopped off his own dong so he could plead insanity. You'd still have to be insane to follow through. Most gruesome thing I've seen was a suicide. The guy shot himself in the head with a shotgun and fell back onto his bed. The body bled out completely and all the blood soaked into the mattress. His brains were splattered all over the ceiling, walls, etc. He laid there for almost an entire week before his wife returned home and called us. Walking into that room is an image I will never be able to get out of my mind. Not a cop but my best friend's father-in-law was a police officer in Milwaukee during the 90s. When Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested he was assigned the task of counting the body parts in his freezer and fridge and bagging them up. He's only brought it up once but he says that it haunts him to this day and he has dreams about it. Love a good Dharma story. My good friend's parents were friends with him. As close of friends as he ever had. He went to our high school with them. Revere High School in Richfield. Oh. When one of the moves came out. They were selling it at a grocery store and my friend's mom just nonchalantly says that doesn't look like him at all. Freaked him out a lot. Can't recall where but in another reddit thread of a cop saying he was confronted by a teenager with a rifle, he drew his gun and the teen shot himself with the rifle in front of his parents. Can't imagine how terrible that would be for anyone to witness let alone the parents. I made the mistake of asking a law school peer of mine, who was an ex-cop, the questions which of the subject of this thread. This was his response. Responded to a call of a suicidal teen in a field with a gun. Everyone tried to talk him down, including the parents, but it didn't work. You could tell it stuck with him. He quit being a cop and came to law school right after that. I was never a cop but my dad was. He was a detective and was always called to the scene of crimes. Especially murders, suicides, etc. He walks in on a man who had put a sword off. 12 gauge shotgun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. Blood and brain splattered all over the wall and a child not knowing why his dad did this. My dad was a homicide detective in Denver. They were called out to Columbine HS in 1999. 
He said it was the worst scene he had ever seen in his career. The image that sticks with me the most is that even the SWAT guys couldn't hold in their tears and emotion. As a Columbine graduate who was in 6th grade 2 miles away that day, tell your dad thanks if you can. A guy I work W had a prisoner in his car the guy somehow had slipped his cuffs in front of him but not before he had pulled the pocket knife he had hidden in his butt out. He then reached up and slit my co-worker's neck almost from ear to ear. Luckily he grabbed the guy's hand as it came around and he drew his weapon and got a few rounds off thankfully the knife missed anything serious. I had taken the night off or I would have been in that situation. Just a few nights ago I had a case where a mother's BF had beaten her child in the face so bad it looked like he had gone to a face painting booth and someone had drawn a deep purple almost black butterfly around his eyes. He also had the greenish yellow bruising covering the rest of his face. The little boy was only 3 and the mother as well as BF was telling everyone that her 5 years old had done it. It wasn't gruesome by any means however I've never felt that kinda sick before. Your buddy is lucky. The butt knives are always of the most dangerous variety. As a Metro Detroit resident I can say your fear of the airport is not needed. The airport is fine for any dangerous crime. Same security any airport has. Also as far as Detroit goes. Any touristy spots are fine. Most of the crime and nasty things you hear about are not in any locations outsiders would go. Downtown Detroit is pretty safe. Family friend was a motorway officer in the UK high speed training etc. So apparently one day there was a major crash on the motorway. Anyway he was given the task of collecting the body parts that had been ejected from the cars. Of rough estimate, 20 people. I am law enforcement, but this isn't my story. An instructor and former police officer I had in college told me this one. My storytelling skills aren't the greatest, but hear what happened. He was working normal patrol when they got a call about a murder in a residential neighborhood that was normally quite and uneventful. A little backstory first. A lady lost her 5 year old daughter several years ago and shortly after was diagnosed with schizophrenia. The older, surviving daughter had tried to seek help for her mother several times but was never actually able to have her committed into any form of treatment. The symptoms of her schizophrenia was that she heard voices telling her that her neighbor's daughter, who was around the same age as her daughter when she died, was actually her daughter, reincarnated, as the devil. Because of this, the voices kept telling her that she needs to kill the girl, to kill the demon and free her daughter. So my instructor got the call while out on patrol. When he and his partner arrived, the Nigba's daughter was on the sidewalk with a large kitchen knife in her chest. Apparently the woman had finally given in to the voices and stabbed the girl in the chest. When they talked to her, all she kept saying was how the girl was the devil and she had to do it. He said it still bothers him to this day, seeing the girl with a knife in her chest and all the blood. I worked as a prosecutor, not a cop. But without the cop this would have been a terribly gruesome crime. A M head was trying to steal anhydrous ammonia to trade to his cook for some finished product. The cops caught him laying under a tank trying to drill into it from the bottom. It's only a liquid because it's under high pressure. So there's no way he could have gotten out from under the tank in time to avoid extreme exposure. Had he been successful he would have been drowned in liquid ammonia. Which would not have been pretty. <laughs> was on a civil jury trial where the guy was working a machine that pulled the hides off cows in a meat plant. Somehow the chain they attached to the cows to do this. There were two of them got around his head and decapitated him. Still remember it to this day. What came out in the trial is that they were suing for a few million the family because they claimed the machine was defective. But the defense had still footage of the guy who got decapitated as well as other workers putting the chain around their neck as a joke. How the machine got turned on and decapitated him we don't know, but if it was criminal they never said so. They were suing the owner of the plant and the machine manufacturer. Because of the horseplay issue and the defense attorney creating a lot of doubt, we wound up not awarding any money. Army nurse deployed to Afghanistan. Seen some gore in my time. So working at the hospital there we get a call for a mass call, lots of patients, 10 minutes out from a suicide bomber. All available people go out to the helipad waiting to unload and start treating. So the first two choppers land and unload without incident, then the last chopper lands. Stretchers are normally put on rickshaws, two big bike tires that balance the stretcher on a frame. 
so you don't have to actually carry the 250 pounds load off patient gear. By this point everyone was out of rickshaws, so we were carrying the stretchers. Finally all the living patients were unloaded and there is just one stretcher left with a blanket over for the dead. So the last two people run up and start pulling the stretcher off. The guy up front grabs his handles and starts sliding the stretcher so the other guy can grab the other end. Just as the other guy gets his side off the chopper, they both end up dropping one side. Turns out it was two and a half three bodies piled on one stretcher weighing more than they could hold up. So there are legs, heads, arms, torsos laying all over the helipad. We had to go out and pick up the parts and load them up on a few stretchers to, to carry them inside to process them. It was pretty gross, but you get sort of a dark sense of humor after a while. We all managed to laugh about it later that day. My father is XLAPD. As you can imagine I have heard a ton of messed up stories however this one in particular always pops in my head from time to time. There was a break in at his buddy's house who apparently was an off duty cop. Suspect had his wife at knife point. He had his revolver out and in the heat of the moment he took the shot. Unfortunately the round hit his wife right in the head and the suspect got away. When my dad arrived he was watching one of his good friends piece his wife's brains together. He was collecting fragments of his wife's head and brain attempting to fix her like some doll while whispering to her dead corpse that everything was going to be okay. A friend of mine was a detective for the Toronto Metro Police. When he was in uniform, he and his partner were called to a severe vehicular accident. Several people were dead and dismembered. Upon arrival the officer in charge of the scene assigned the job of body part cleanup to my friend. He begins walking down the highway and spots a leg, a little further down, the other leg, then an arm, and finally what appears to be a torso up ahead. He approaches the female torso, expecting it lifeless. Until she lifted her head to look at him and ask, what happened? EMTs were called as fast as they can. My friend went in the ambulance with her and noted how she was wiggling the little bone splint jutting from her shoulder and screaming let go of my arm. She died 2 minutes into the ride. I am not a medic or anything, but I was a combat lifesaver when I was in Iraq. One day they called for extra assistance over at medical for a mass casualty situation. This usually means blood donors and such but they called for any advanced medically trained personnel. More than basic first aid, which was kind of strange. When I made it to medical there were a few people standing around. Then the trucks started arriving with all of the wounded in them. It was all children. Around 30 of them. From around 18 months to 12 years old. Of by destined for an Iraqi police. Most likely, station had been spotted thanks to a bolo was fired on by one of our patrols and drove into a park area behind a wall where children were playing and was detonated. Worst day of my life. And that is all I am going to say on the subject. Vbide, vehicle based IED, improvised explosive device, bolo, and sure, possible be on the lookout. Basically look for something matching this description. I was never a cop or in the military, but my dad was the assistant fire chief and a level 3 EMT in my hometown, and I went with him on calls sometimes. He was a single dad and it was a small town, so no one cared that a 10 year old was coming on calls. The three that immediately come to my mind that I was with him for. 1. My hometown is in upstate NY, and a lot of people from New Jersey or Nick would come up in the winter to snowmobile, but since they didn't know the laws or the area well, a lot of them died during the winter. Aside, the town highway department had a dead pool every winter that everyone shipped into, and whoever guessed the correct number of dead out of town snowmobilers won. It was typically 3-8 a year, so one night. A snowmobiler is riding in town on one of our back roads and doesn't notice the sharp turn until it's too late and goes off the road and straight into a tree at around 40-45 mph. He didn't look too bad on the outside and was still alive when my dad and I and another EMT showed up on scene. The other EMT begins CPR. The snowmobiler had massive internal damage that wasn't readily apparent, so the chest compressions caused pieces of his lungs to come up in his mouth which the other EMT got a mouthful of during mouth to mouth. 2. Another dead snowmobiler tail. This was another out of towner who was speeding and didn't know the area well and hit a tree. His body hit the tree parallel to the ground and kind of wrapped on impact. He was killed immediately. The body they took away was about 7 feet, 
but his driver's license listed him at 5 feet 9 inches or so. 3. Not a dead snowmobile story. My hometown is in the mountains, and we'd get a lot of hikers in the summer. One guy somehow fell off the face of the closest mountain to town, which isn't a very large mountain and is easy to climb. The steepest drop off the face is maybe 100-150 feet down if I had to guess. But anyways, he fell off and nailed a bunch of trees on the way down. We found his body down on the ground, but his intestines were still up in the tree branches like some kind of awful Christmas garland. I don't know if or how anyone got them out of the trees, because I left with my dad after it was determined that he was DOA. Friend of a friend of a friend is a D agent. There were some pictures circulating of a high profile prosecutor who had been cut into pieces, limbs severed and cut up, breasts lopped off, head cut off. The pieces were dumped into a pile in the middle of a street, and a note attached, via a knife stabbing through the note into the flesh. Don't frick with. Los Zetas pull this kind of stuff all the time. They'll behead someone and leave the body hanging off a bridge with a sign saying who it was and why they were killed. Things as petty as mentioning you hate them on social media have been their reasons. Not mine. My stepdad. He was a sug in the New Jersey State Police and decided to go to New York for some American holiday shows what I know about my own country. All the naval ships were in port in the Hudson River. All those massive propellers kicking up dirt made dozens of bodies come up to the surface. Cops, including him, had poles and were trying to resubmerge the bodies so tourists wouldn't see. Note, these were all missing people that the cops had no idea was down there. Oh god. Reminder. Do not attend American naval parades. Dead preteen body in a trash bag in a ditch. He was shoved in a crevice and then his body sank into the muck. Then his body bloated. It took several people several hours before they gave up and brought in a backhoe. Iraq was not fun. Some sick frick cut out a woman's butthole and left it for us to find on a plate. At first we didn't know what the frick it was. Until we found the rest of her. It was like after you eat a ribby steak and there is that little round piece of chunks of flesh on the edge. I've read this story before. Damn it. My father was a police officer. He wrote a book called Nelson's Beat. You can find it on Amazon actually. Anyways. He told me one time. He received a call to go to a house fire. He told me that he had arrived early. He said the woman who owned the house was outside screaming. She ran up to him and said, my son is in there she was freaking out, and rightfully so. My dad looked at the house, which was completely enveloped by flames, the windows broken out, the door aflame, her son screaming in agony, and asked her, what can I do mind you the fire was so hot that the building could not be approached. Disabled Iraq Afghan vet here. First is a second hand story, second is first. 1. I was working at Camp Bucker in 2007 for a short period of time and there was a detainee there with a colostomy bag, and he was segregated from the rest of the population. Well, the man was in Bucker, internment facility for the war, because he had killed soldier with a sniper rifle and was caught. He was detained brought to Bucker and put in a sunny area, he was shite. The man was anally debauched dozens of times over the course of weeks. Beaten and humiliated. He contracted multiple STDs in his rectum. It was determined a colostomy bag was needed. He was then put back into the general population and well, they started violating the hole in his abdomen where the bag was. It soon got infected and well. That's where I saw him laying on a bed with a morphine drip. Cringe. I did indeed. The second one happened later that year while I was in Baghdad working with the national police and they were investigating the disappearance of multiple children. I'll cut things short. We pulled a Dreyfus and Estevez and sat and watched and sure enough we saw a man snatch a child. We followed him back to an building with three people chained together. Multiple dismembered bodies from children to the elderly. I would rather not go into detail but imagine a butcher's shop but the meat isn't off farm fresh. The man was chained to a road post in the front of his building a shot but the national police general. They didn't play any games. Not many questions were asked. I hope you are coping well and you are a true hero for serving in the military. So sorry you had to witness such horrible scenes of crime. Not me, but a friend is a special agent with a dod. He investigated a child shyming case where a guy was trying to frick a one year old. He couldn't fit his dong in the baby's tea, so he cut a hole in the torso and fricked it there. 
I am not a cop but my dad has been one for about 30 years now. He told me a story about a guy who killed another guy in a hotel room by bashing the guy's head in with a brick. There was blood everywhere. Even crazier, they only found the crime scene because the killer turned himself in. He claims he killed the other guy because he wanted to know what it felt like to kill someone else. My father is a cop. He told me a story how a young girl, about 9, was playing with her friends near the railroad tracks behind her house. They were messing around on the tracks when a train was coming. They moved out of the way but the front sled of the train clipped the little girl's head. My dad told me her head opened like a can. As her friends were running away her brain matter splattered all over their backs. My dad said it was one of the most gruesome accidents he's seen. Did two deployments to Afghanistan. Experienced firefights. Survived a couple IED strikes. I was in a mounted squad. Meaning we were in vehicles. I would say watching someone step on an IED and immediately shoot upwards into multiple pieces was pretty raunchy. This was a citizen and not a fellow marine. It's not so much the gruesome aspect of it that's really disturbing. I've seen plenty of bodies throughout my tours. I'm not sure how many of you have witnessed a death. But watching someone go from healthy and walking to deader than dirt is pretty startling. Especially when you watch someone go down from your own bullet. Le cop. I responded to a call where a 20 something female gave birth to a baby girl. Right after the baby was born, the mother stabbed the baby about 20 times with a knife. The lady was convinced she did nothing wrong. I literally had to walk away from that lady to keep myself from hurting her and ending up in jail myself. The worst thing I'll ever see in my life. My uncle was a cop at ground zero. He saw people jump out of buildings and burn to death. Cop friends get a call to a death call at an apartment. They get inside and it smells. As they go from room to room to clear the place they find the occupant in his easy chair by the TV. Not moving. They call that they have the body and will hold the scene until the coroner arrives. The apartment isn't very bright and not clean. Seems to be the norm in my friend's stories so they start surveying the room. They can see that his leg has open wounds on it and there's something moving in the area. As they start to freak out. The dead body picks up the bottle of whiskey by his hand, looks directly at them and yells I'm not dead yet while whatever is in his leg scurries to the darker side of the room. One of my buddies ran out of the apartment and refused to go back in for the rest of the call. The occupant was taken to the hospital, but didn't make it. They never figured out what was in the apartment with him. Decapitated body. My partner and I found the head. Some drug addict dealer killed his girlfriend for some reason and cut her head off. He threw the head in a dumpster and was caught trying to dump the body somewhere. So the morning shift knew that there was a head somewhere in town or in the nearby area. The boyfriend thought that if we couldn't find the head, there wouldn't be enough evidence to convict him of a crime. So he wouldn't tell us where he put it. So we were walking the alleys looking through dumpsters and the trash when my partner found it. My partner got the shock. But I had the time to prepare myself so it wasn't as bad as I thought. But it was still super fricked up. The new guy who saw it after us threw up all over the ground and his uniform. Went back to the station and stayed there the rest of the day. He didn't come in for a few days and then he decided he didn't want to be a cop. Or at least not a cop with that department. A friend of mine is a cop and told me a story about a being called to a house and walking up a stairwell trickling with blood leading to the master bedroom. Lying there gasping for breath was a guy who had cut his neck nearly all the way through with a bread knife. My buddy grabbed a towel and put pressure on the wound, but had to let up every so often so the guy could draw a breath. My uncle who was a detective for a small town was called to a house. Someone said they heard a gunshot late at night. He got there and this woman had stood in the middle of the living room and shot herself in the head with buckshot. He said all four walls had blood on them and her neck was like a banana peel. I have several friends in law enforcement. I'm joining next month. Or at least trying to. Anyway they've all said the worst scenes weren't the gruesome gore ridden crimes. But the mothers who shook their little babies to death. Apparently that happens a lot and it's really depressing to show up to a crying mother who shook her baby and accidentally killed it. I guess it snaps their neck or something. I think shaken baby syndrome is typically brain trauma from their brains bouncing around in their skulls. I could be wrong though. 
saw the presentation once from a forensic pathologist. It was focused on her time as a resident pathologist in Mississippi. She shows us a picture of a crime scene, with body and all, and makes us guess what the cause of death was. Then she reveals a story. Anyways, this one picture is of this man in severe stages of decomposition. Maggots crawling out his eye socket. Everything gross. Classmates guess. Oh yeah. He was stabbed. Nope. Clearly a shot to the head. Nope. Turns out that the man had a dental abscess and died in his home after failing to seek treatment. At the time, all the law enforcement people thought the death was murder. Point is, people decompose you but quick in the south. Gross. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.